and exciting compositions without a lot of planning? It's possible, and I'm showing you how today in three simple-ish steps. This is definitely a paint along with me type of situation, so let's get started gathering supplies. And I warn you, it's going to be a wild selection today, so hold on to your shorts. I'm using a silk watercolor paper today. Three different handmade watercolor palettes, 31 purple fish, mashas, and octarine. And for brushes, it's just paper, my three quarter inch dagger, and remember joy, my liner brush. Now don't worry, all the supplies will be listed below. There's three steps to simpler compositions when you're just not feeling like being too serious about composition. Number one, start somewhere, but off center. Number two, choose a general direction for your composition. And number three, one thing at a time. Let's do this. And so for the majority of today, I'm going to be using that it's just paper brush to cover more area more quickly. All right, starting friends wet on dry with that beautiful pink color. Oh, I love it. But then going right in after rinsing my brush with a teal and just kind of seeing what happens. Now, I need to follow my own rules for this simpler approach to composition. And number one, I started in a place off center, really off center. I'm up here in the upper, upper left-hand corner, but it's okay. I'm immediately though getting a sense of my second rule, which is a sense of direction. And I already know I'm feeling this vibe, like I want this to start in the upper left-hand corner and then kind of serpentine itself very subtly across and around and winding about the surface or the diagonal of the page. Yeah, so I've already tackled two of the approaches to this composition. Now, did you see me just lay down that green leaf? This is a little aside about this quote unquote paper. It's interesting. It's everything that you would imagine painting on like a cotton but it has a better kind of watercolor paper feel than cotton wood. I don't really know how to describe it yet. I did a little playing around before filming this, so that's how I have this kind of information to give you right now about this paper. It's super curious and it's certainly keeping me on my toes and there's definitely something to be said for that. I am just moving and grooving, thinking of the general direction, that serpentine kind of vibe that I'm going for, laying down one color and then when that color is still damp on the page, I am adding a second color. Doing a lot of double loading here. Look at that big long leaf there. It started kind of bluey purple and I am just letting that color run out of my brush. Really long skinny leaves here and I'm feeling it. I'm loving that vibe going in with the same kind of approach with a rusty color and then look at that peach. I didn't rinse my brush. As I'm dragging, I am wiggling or waving my brush ever so slightly. It's a lovely approach. And these longer leaves here are giving me that direction that I'm after so that I can have this effective composition, hopefully, without a lot of fuss. Notice, friends, I am not rinsing my brush all that much, and it's okay. I am, by design, hoping for a little bit more of a muted finish to this. So not rinsing a lot is going to kind of go right along with that. So the whole one thing at a time, that's the rule number three in a easy breezy, beautiful composition. Yeah. What do I mean by that? Well, focus on what you're focusing on when you need to focus on it. <laughs> that was clear as mud. But seriously, if we're painting one leaf and then already automatically thinking about the next 15 leaves and where we might place them and what color they might be, we're kind of working against ourselves. We're like walking into the wind and you know you don't get too far or you get where you're going a lot slower when you're walking into the wind. So let the leaf you're painting right now be the focus and then when it is finished, let that leaf be the informant of what to do next. For example, right now, 
I am working on this kind of flowy, organic, but rather large leaf. I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm slightly nervous in the back of my head saying, gosh, that's pointing in a completely different direction. It's kind of interrupting the flow, but I like the vibe overall. I'm gonna let it go. Now I've moved on and I'm starting to add some branchy stuff with a press and lift motion. And that's allowing me to soften the harshness of direction that I created with that big leaf, you know, that thing that I was nervous about in the back of my head. But if I had gotten all caught up in the, oh my gosh, what did I do? Horrible decision. The direction of that leaf is all wrong. I probably wouldn't have the clarity of mind to make the decision about adding some little branchy, viney moments that softened that harsh decision. Hopefully that made sense. Head into comments and let me know if that description about making one decision at a time as a way to get more effective but less stressful compositions made sense. And while you're at it, if you're having fun enjoying this little compositional experiment, go ahead and give this video a boop. Because honestly, friends, when I see those boops, that tells me that I am teaching what you want to learn. All right, friends, I skipped ahead a few moments. I want to show you the evolution here, okay? I added some more peach underneath that really full leaf from before that was kind of taking its own direction. I added some olive -y color leaves, and again, just exaggerating that direction. And you can see I still have that main serpentine vibe going on at the middle diagonal of the composition overall. And it's working, it's wild, it's modestly chaotic, but it's working. And it's working in a sense, would it hang in the Louvre and be considered high art? No, but it's working in the sense that it's satisfying, that it's something I'm proud of. Then dare I say, I might even think about at this point, giving it as a gift to someone. And that for me is a huge win. And I have a guess that it's probably a huge win for you as well. Adding some really kind of loosey-goosey, sloppy dots that could be berries, that could be very distant filler, kind of diffused, who knows what they are, but it's adding contrast and a little bit of a balance of color, bringing in some more of those purples that flow nicely with the purples from the leaves I added earlier. All right, breaking out the liner brush because yeah, there's never not a good time to break out the liner brush. Have fun with this, friends. I use this brush all the time. And if you wanna know more about the liner brush and how to get better acquainted with it, I want you to watch this video soon. It's gonna take you through a series of really fun exercises to get you loosened up with this brush. I love going in with unexpected color on top of these leaves. And at this point, we're in the gravy stage. We, you know, we're gonna be working back and forth between structure and focusing on our compositional decisions in a stress-free way, of course, and then the gravy of watercolor and adding these linear details to already establish shapes that you're happy with. Friends, that is creative gravy. So let's see how it unfolds. All right, it's really coming along. Notice how I've really stayed focused on that subtle serpentine direction decision that I made early on in this painting. But I haven't had to overthink it. Just having that simple direction has served me well and has kept this painting experience seriously low key. Making one decision at a time has also served me beautifully. For example, if I had continued those original rusty peachy leaves in their same saturation or intensity, if I hadn't just made that little grouping of a decision and let it lie, it probably would have become overwhelming and distracting, like your eye wouldn't have known where to go. But instead, I let them kind of just simmer. And I came back to that area later with a little bit more context and more painting time under my belt and decided to continue those shapes slightly smaller and a lot less saturated. And it worked out beautifully. Continuing on here, friends, adding more berries and just adding an extra layer of very loose detail. 
I also got a little crazy happy with the spray bottle here, but it's a really fun, happy accident releasing some more of the bright color from that purple brush stroke that I laid down earlier. And I actually kind of dig it. All right, friends, let me know. Do you think this kind of easy breezy laid back compositional approach would serve you well? And if you do, head into comments and let me know why. And if you're concerned that it might not, or it seems confusing, I also would love to hear why. You know what else I'd love to hear? Which part of this painting is your favorite? I gotta be honest, for me, it's those peach leaves. I could develop an entire additional composition just based on those peach leaves and also those peach and like teal leaves. They also have my heart too. So I'd love to know which ones have your heart. Now, a little bit about this silk paper. Honestly, I'm not terribly like jazzed about it. It's interesting, but for the cost, I don't think it's something I would like run after hard to get into my collection again. But I will say this, if you have a little extra funds and you wanna try something that will keep you on your toes and give you a really cool result, I would recommend this. Adding some of my lovely loop de doos friends, so fun and so effective in a composition that has a lot of similar shapes, despite the shapes being quite different in scale. I actually love the way this paper scrubs out. It stains pretty easily, no matter what brand you're using. And I think that's just the nature of the silk. But look what's happening over here on the right hand side as I kind of remove some of that beloved peach. Look how it's just diffusing into the background while still leaving kind of a ghost imprint of the original brush strokes. And now I can go over top, wet on damp, and get some really exciting results. Oh, look at that olive yellow green. Oh my gosh, this is really cool. Okay, this paper, while it's pricey, definitely, definitely some fun to be had. I have another stress-free approach to composition. It's called the Palette Tango, and you might wanna watch this when you have a moment. The link is below. Composition doesn't have to be stressful. And even though there are a lot of technical things to consider when it comes to a really visually powerful composition, it doesn't always have to be technical. I think we've proven that today. Now, if you are jonesing for a little bit more technicality when it comes to this subject, Watch this one next. I'll see you over there for some more happy painting.